2012, The Dark Age of Star Wars The Old Republic. 2013, Waking Up and Free to Play. 2014, The End Game Struggle. 2015, More of the Same. These are the hot topics I will be sharing with you in this rather long video today. Greetings from Bulgaria, I'm Volk and welcome to the so-called part 2, even though it can be taken as a standalone video. Swator in retrospect, the Dark Times, the Awakening and the End Game struggles covering the periods from 2012 pretty much since release up to the end of 2015, the time of recording this video. I will be reading the script that I've transferred and um, created in the form of an article published on my website, so if you're visiting this video of mine for the very first time and you haven't previously heard my horrible accent, well, you have a way to escape it. Plus, in the article there are tons and tons of links, references and interesting additions that I won't be able to show in the video. However, I will show you different things during the video, so you will be entertained both reading and or watching. Shall we begin? Two thousand and twelve, the dark age of my favorite game, the crazy launch. I covered this briefly in the previous video I've created, or so-called part one. But now I, want, now I want to show some examples and talk more in depth about the game's performance and its player base. Yeah, everything was booming in the first few months after the release, which was in twentieth of December two thousand and eleven. And yes, this video and the article are in celebration of the fourth birthday of my favorite MMO. So everything was booming in the first few months. The servers were all full through the roof and especially in December 2011 and January 2012 things were more than perfect. Everybody was noob-ish. Everybody was excited. Everybody was living out their own personal Star Wars adventure. The first patch, 1.1, the most unexpected update. I think very few actually expected the first major update to the game to arrive so soon. Only about two weeks have passed after New Year. Most of us were still enjoying the explorations, PvP, side quests, new planets and regions. And Bauer added a brand new content and game content to that, even though it was just a flashpoint. I myself, as a huge zombie fan, welcomed the very happily and my sentinel had been just about level 50 for three weeks or so when this patch landed on the live server so i had the chance to get to count uh, immediately and whoa the store inside the choices the atmosphere it was oh so great i still remember how i loved the little touch and effect of the light balls that you pick up upon entering the dark areas of the instance the second boss was a hell of a challenge until we figured out the mechanics. The bonus boss in hard mode was a death spreading machine. And the final conversation after the third boss was very interesting and the options we had seemed meaningful and provoking to do the instance two, three times with different characters. So we can see what happens next when the next one the so-called Lost Island would eventually be released. We didn't know of course that there will be a Lost Island at the time with the story depending on the different choices we've made with these different characters. Patch 1.2, my legacy and the four-man operation. When Bioware released this patch, we believed a new era of challenges introduced. For the first time ever, a flashpoint was so damn hard and unbeatable for casual players that the developers rightfully placed it as the first of many, we hoped, but it didn't happen, Tier 2 flashpoints, Lost Island proved a decent upgrade to Count Under Siege and an excellent addition of the mini story arc with the Ragus, or with the zombies. Or so we thought. The world event, the first one I mean from April 2012 about the Ragu plague on Tatooine just blew our minds and uh, made us believe that Bioware is capable of truly turning the game into something unseen for both casual players as well as hardcore raiders and PvPers. A new operation was released and introduced and the need for new endgame content was covered for a while. 
Explosive Conflict, or the Nova as I call it for short, was a good step up in challenge compared to the already desperately boring Eternity Vault and Caragas Palace operations. It was here, and in this patch, when the everybody's favorite monster, boss, villain, or everything else was born. Warworld Kefes was a great final encounter of the new operation in all of the modes, well actually at the time story mode and hard mode. Patch 1.3, enter Group Finder. No new story content with this patch came out into our monitors and uh, PC stations, but the introduction of the Group Finder was a very needed addition to the game as many players had already left due to the boredom and or due to the fact that they expected something different from Bioware. At this point, the game was already struggling hard with active player base. The subscriptions were dropping fast and hardcore raiding guilds were fading away and disbanding. There, ha there was just not enough endgame content to feed the starving one character raiders, who only cared about the next boss kill and the loot drop. Story wasn't enough, as expected. The lack of active players on the PvP front was also noticeable and that's why Bioware allowed with this same patch the same faction battles in the older own Civil War Warzone. Patch 1.3 was the first one to introduce the ranked PvP into SWOTOR. Yeah, do you remember those 8 vs 8 war zones? They don't exist anymore. Patch 1.4 Kefes Returns TFB was new, different and interesting. It presented the players with a fun puzzle boss, puzzle is with quotes, and great new place to visit, explore and conquer or clear. The mysterious Gree came to warn both Republic and Empire about the incoming danger. Aside from the big new operation, Terror from Beyond, Bauer gave all of the classes a nice spin with quite a lot of alterations, changes, nerfs and improvements. Oh, I forgot to mention, Kefes came back. He was bigger, uglier, grumpier. He was boss number 4 in this 5 boss operation. Patch 1.5 Free to play for the win! On 15th November 2012, the game saw light in the end of the tunnel. Subscriptions kept dropping during the summer and despite the cool new operation added with the previous update, it was still not enough and the hate and troll trains were gaining speed. The first mode or version if you prefer a free to play introduced a very limited demo of the real game. Bioware restricted the new players who didn't subscribe so much that the negativity prevailed in the first reactions on the internet. Slowly but very steadily the developers corrected many of these mistakes with the original mode of the free to play and they turned it from crazy restrictive SWAT war demo into a very tolerable but still a demo mode game. Along with a huge change, nearly 5 months passed with uh, no big updates since 1.4, we also received a new nightmare mode for explosive conflict. Section X was added to the game on the planet Belsavis, as well as the option to recruit a brand new companion, the HK-51 droid, whose quest start exactly there in this region. The quest was also quite fun and very long. The game started feeling alive again. We finally began recovering from the server mergers from two months ago and the rage from all living players who joined at launch not having a clue what they should expect from Sotor and naturally left betrayed and uh, disappointed uh, soon enough. Well, I'm not saying EA were, yeah that's correct, didn't deserve the rage aimed at them with the crazy greediness they keep showing not only in Sotor but with any other game they have produced in the past. 10 years, they absolutely do. Patch 1.6, PvP is back on the map. In the very late 2012, finally a new war zone was released. It was following the theme of the previous patch, the ancient Hypergate introduced new PvP mechanics, well at least they were new to SWOT War. 2013, waking up and free to play. Patch 1.7, Aliens on Ilum. After a very long break with uh, no world events, this patch brought in the first Gree event. 
I still remember how long and hard I farmed it for these first two weeks when it was active. Yep, the first great event lasted two weeks. I ended up with more tokens than I ever needed. Bioware added a new feature to the legacy system as well. And it was called Legacy Reputation. Now we had one more thing to farm and achieve. It was here somewhere in the end of May 2013 when my own YouTube channel that we know today, Volksotor, was born. Inheriting my Aura Guild and DR Guild old channels who were dedicated to the two guilds I was a member of previously. Patch 2.0, they called it an expansion. Macab was a very different experience for all of us. The planet represented interesting and a very new environment. New story, though not personal, but most of all, a new way of leveling. The quests were rewarding so much experience that there were almost no side quests available and there wasn't a need for them, except for the some dailies on some of the messes. Messes were the small regions on the planet. It felt like we could have gone from 50 to 55 in no time, and that was actually the reality. I don't want to even mention the micro binoculars and the seeker droid quests. I still have nightmares from those, especially the second one. Scum and Villainy was a brand new operation available at level 55 in both story mode and hard mode. Terror from Beyond was also rescaled to level 55 with its story mode and hard mode. 2.0 was actually separated into two kind of smaller updates, one for the game changes including mechanics, operations, uh, player balancing and such, and another one for the story. Obviously, PTS only had the first one available to the players. It truly really was a great update, but still somehow not enough to be called a real expansion. Well, considering what we got as an expansion after that, 2.0 turned out to be a good one. <laughs> but I'm going ahead of myself. It contained a lot of other things, but I'm also trying to just highlight the most important ones, else we'll stay here until tomorrow. It was important to note that originally before going free to play, Bioware had plans to make Macabre a free addition, so a free patch to the game. But after they changed their plans, Macabre turned into an expansion. That's probably why many of us didn't, couldn't feel the planet being deserving uh, to be called expansion. Patch 2.1 Outfits Finally, we were allowed to look different and unique. Appearance designer helped us a lot and uh, DICE just gave us even more options and possibilities. Please make a note that this appearance designer is not the outfit designer. And yes, outfit designer was a whole new tool added in, I believe, patch 3.0 much later into the game. Qatar came to the world of Sotor as the new playable species and I quickly created my second Marauder to experience it. It was fun, fun experience. Patch 2.2 Nightmare Struggles In the summer of 2013, the starvation for quality endgame content was again topic number one for most of us. Bauer attempted to answer with the nightmare modes of Terror from Beyond and Scum and Villainy. Well, how they did it, oh my. At the time, my guild Solstice was a semi-hardcore 16-man raiding guild with about 20-22 active raiders who swapped spots each week. It was the Shadow's Assassin's nerf combined with the Dreadguards being nearly unbeatable that unfortunately made many more players leave the game instead of buckling up and charging again and again until they defeat the damn boss encounter. Weeks passed by after Drop It Like It's Hot, the name of a guild, killed the second boss and also cleared the instance, first in the world before a second guild finally managed to clear the operation as a world second and Bauer didn't stay inactive to answer the call for TFV nerf. Was it a good decision? Well, for some it was, for others wasn't, obviously. This was, in my opinion, the first time we ever witnessed a truly challenging content being seriously nerfed while it's still endgame. I'm not counting the Lost Island Dumbass nerf that came with patch 2.0. Lost Island was just a flashpoint after all, even though it was incredibly tough in the beginning. Patch 2.3 Zerka Along with the two new flashpoints, we now finally had a chance to hunt or buy ugh, 
our own Tonton mount. Best mount ever introduced to the game. Well, until the wings. That's the drop from Bronte's Nightmare from Dread Fortress. Patch 2.4, the Dreadmasters. Oricon was a new zone, added as a standalone moon, but in, in reality it was just another small daily area with uh, entrances to the two new ops, Dread Fortress and Dread Palace. We've been waiting for real new content for so long, not counting the nightmare updates through the summer, when Bioware told us we will get not one but two new operations, we were out of our minds filled with happiness and joy. Both were challenging with some really cool ideas for boss mechanics and even the trash mechanics, one-shotting uh, teammates and guildmates after the third boss with the droids was just so fun. Unfortunately, the level cap remained 55 and with most of us wearing nightmare gear from the previous content, clearing the new hard modes was a lot quicker and easier than we hoped for. By the end of the first week, most if not all of the raiding guilds have done uh, the 10 new bosses and had them on farm already. Around this time, it was when I honestly had my best time in the game together with my guild solstice. Here are a few examples linked here somewhere in the video what kind of fun and jokes and uh, trolls we had during our raids and gameplay